Hi there. In this video, I'm going to look at the PyCade and PyCade console and how you can add your own games. This will be useful if you have existing games that you want to play on the PyCade or if you're creating your own using PyGame or PyGame Zero. The PyCade is a desktop arcade machine based around a Raspberry Pi. The PyCade console is the same but without the screen, so you can plug it into your own TV using a HDMI cable. I've owned a PyCade for some time which is powered by a Raspberry Pi 3. I've recently bought myself a PyCade console. This is the latest version designed for a Raspberry Pi 4 which includes a USB-C power supply connector. This is the one I'll be using for this. The principles apply the same whichever you use, although there is one potential issue with the console, which I'll explain later. When I first got the PyCade console, then I had to run Raspbian, now Raspberry Pi OS, and install RetroPie on top of that, but they've now released a full RetroPie image for the Raspberry Pi 4. This is based on that. There are several links that you'll need, which I've included in the description for this video. It's also included on my website www.penguintutor.com slash RetroPie. Here's the RetroPie website and if you click on the download link then you'll see there's images you can install here. These need to be transferred to your SD card. An easier way is to use the Raspberry Pi imager. This is downloaded from the Raspberry Pi website and can be used for putting all different kinds of operating systems and as you see RetroPie has been added and for the Raspberry Pi 4 you choose that one. Choose the SD card. In my case I've got a 32 gigabyte SD card connected via a USB adapter so that's that one. Always make sure you get the right SD card. You don't want to be accidentally overwriting important data. Then click right. This will download the image from the website and will then write that to the SD card. This is going to take a while, so we'll fast forward this stage. The imager has finished now. Uh, you see it says you now remove, remove the SD card from the reader. Take that out and put that into the PyCade. So now powering on the PyCade console. As you can see, I'm using GUVC view, which is using a USB HDMI capture card that is allowing me to see it on Kubuntu, which is what I'm using here. So it's going to go through its first boot and it's going to resize the disk partitions and a few other setups. And then we'll reach the point where we're going to set up the joystick or the controller. At this point you will need a keyboard to be attached and this will only be needed initially while setting it up because we haven't yet installed the drivers for the joystick and such. So here you can see no gamepads detected, so we're going to use the keyboard. I'm just going to hold down any key for the keyboard for it to detect it. And now we have to go through the keyboard settings. So I'm going to show you a shot of the keyboard layout that I'm using. There is no fixed layout as such and this is one I've come up with based on something that seems quite logical. So the, the first ones the controllers are, are straightforward enough. Up use the, the keypad keys up down left and right. 
for the start I'm using O which is the start button and select I'm going to use return which is the rightmost button and then using the two yellow buttons so I'm actually pressing the left control left shift then left alt Z X and then space I'm actually pressing these on the keyboard when we come to use them on the console these are mapped to alternative buttons I'm not going to map the rest of the keys and to get away with that you just hold down one of the keys that you've already set up until it moves on to the next one so just go through these one at a time and then the hot key you do need to enable this is important particularly when playing console games that you need to be able to escape out of you can use the I button which is the leftmost front button okay which you press the A button so that's left control and now we've gone into the retro pie screen at the moment there's no game showing because they need to be added you don't get any included with retro pie which is due to copyright issues And so now we're going to go on to setting up the menu system. So you press the left control button to go into the configure menu. And first scroll down to Rasp by config. And then the left control again to go into that. I suggest you change the user password first of all. It's uh, never a good idea to leave the default passwords as they're obviously well known. Then I'm going to go to the networking options and it's going to go Wi Fi and it's just going to ask you the country. So you need to set the um, the appropriate country for it to know which channels it can use. Uh, I'm going to choose GB because that's where I'm based. I don't actually need to carry on with the rest of the config here because I'll do that through RetroPie so I'll just cancel that. While I'm here I'm going to go into the interfacing options, enable SSH because we'll be using that later when transferring files to the retro pie and now we can go back finish to use the network setup in here which is the last option Wi-Fi remember it's the left control button to select it when you're in the blue screens then you use a normal keyboard like enter keys for OK and things like that when you're in the emulation station which is the, the retro pie image then you're using the, the keys that you set up at the start. Uh, connect to a Wi-Fi network at this point you should be able to select your home network and enter the password for that. So it's connected and you can see the IP address on there, uh, which in this case is 192.168.0.135. Uh, we're going to need to remember that for later. And then you can exit from there. If you didn't catch it from there, then it's also available on this option screen here, which will, it's the top entry, your IP is 192.168.0.135. 
192.168.0.135 so it's fine now that we've done that we need to quit out of emulation station so if you press the o button that's we set up as a start key will bring up this main menu and you can go to quit and quit emulation station emulation stations as i said providing the the menu system and from here we've now connected to the network so now we can access a setup script that is provided by Pimeroni who creates the, the PyCade. So it's https colon double slash get dot Pimeroni pim dot com slash PyCade at and then pipe through bash. That's the vertical line. Now this is going to run program, um, download and then run it and it's going to set up the install. So obviously normally very careful about downloading things over the internet. In this case we know Pimeroni is the manufacturer and it's therefore safe to use. So this is going to download some code and it's going to set up the raspi.gpio which is going to control the keyboard. The next thing is to go to Raspi config again and set up the keyboard. You can escape or you can just do sudo raspi config here. Sorry, to set up the screen resolution. So there's a limitation when running Pi Game Zero games on the console, and in particular in, in Retro Pi and the, the emulations they use, they automatically scale the applications to fit the window, uh, but that doesn't automatically happen for Pi Game Zero. So I'm going to set a quite a low resolution. I'm going to use 1024 by 768. It doesn't sound particularly impressive, particularly if you're connecting this to a HD or a or a 4K screen. But bear in mind that the emulators in RetroPie are actually designed for TVs, which are even lower resolution than what we're going to be using here. So. You'll also notice that this is not a widescreen format. By setting this as a 4x3 format will allow you to set up your TV, whether it gives you the borders or stretches to the screen, whichever you prefer. The alternative is to write the game specifically for the resolution of the screen that you set up. Uh, the game I'm, I'll be showing is designed for an 800x600 screen, which is the default for Pi Game Zero, which on a large screen would just give you a small game in the the corner which isn't ideal. So I might look at how we can create games that scale up better in future so I might add a video about that later. But in the case of Pi Game Zero this would mean creating a little bit of customization for each different screen resolution which is a bit of a trade-off between making a game program framework that it's easy to use for creating simple games. So as I say, we'll just go into the advanced options and go into the screen resolution. I'm going to choose mode 16. That's it, DMT mode 16, which is 1024 by 768. And then finished. And at this point, it's going to ask you to reboot. So yes, choose reboot. And it will now restart and it will have the networking enabled and it will be at a low resolution that will be suitable for the games. And there we go. As you can see, actually, it looks quite reasonable on this. is set up as a uh, 720p screen. As SSH is now enabled on the PyCade, it's possible to use SFTP to upload files such as ROMs or your own games. 
If used in Linux, then many of the file managers support SFTP, such as Dolphin, which is included in Kubuntu, which is what I'll be using here. Here I've put in SFTP colon double slash followed by the IP address of the PyCade, which we found out earlier. We'll then ask for authentication. Use Py as the user and then your password, which we set earlier. So as I entered the password, you can see that we'll now be logged in. And you can see the main directories that are on the home slash Pi. If you were using Windows or the Raspberry Pi, then you can install a client such as FileZilla. I'll include a link to that in the description. Once you're logged in, then you go to RetroPi and then the ROMs. And this is where the ROMs for the different games from the emulators are stored. As you can see, there is a folder for each different emulator, such as the classic Atari 2600. And if you go in there, then you can just drop the files into the appropriate directory. There aren't any ROMs provided with RetroPie, which is due to copyright issues. Be careful when downloading from the internet, as many are subject to copyright. If you look in the RetroPie forums, then there are some places where you can download genuine free ROMs, or you can buy emulators that come with the genuine ROM images. I'll include a link in the description, but you may need to verify those yourself, as anyone can add links in the forum. What I'd really like to show in this video is how you can install your own games which have been written in Python or Pygame Zero, which is what we'll get on to next. For this, I'm going to install a game which I wrote as part of my book, Beginning Games Programming with Pygame Zero. The book website is shown here, but you don't need to buy the book to follow this. The source code is freely available. If you scroll down, there's a link to the source code which is on GitHub. So, although you don't need to buy this, if you're looking to start creating your own games, then you might want to have a look at this and see if it's something you're interested in. But the code can be downloaded. You can use the download zip file, or I'll show you how we can download it directly in, in the PyCade rather than having to transfer it. You can continue to the next stage using the keyboard and configure through the RetroPie page. You'd need to quit em emulation station as we did before and enter the commands on the command line or you can use SSH. I'm on Linux and let SSH is included as standard as it is on, on Mac OS. If you're on Windows, then you might want to download Putty, which is a SSH client. So you log in by doing SSH and it's pi, the username at, and then the IP address. And enter the password. So the first thing we're going to do is install Pygame Zero because that's not installed by default. So that's sudo apt install and it's Python 3-pg0. And that'll install that. just take a, a short while to download that. Once this is finished, I'm going to download the source code from the book, which is wget followed by the link that was on that previous page. I will include the link in the description. You can just copy and paste it, which would be easier than uh, typing this out manually. So 
it's wget and it's a github page it's a press and then beginning game program with pycame zero and I've just downloaded the master zip file for that and as you can see it's downloading as name master.zip so we just need to unzip that so unzip master.zip and it creates a directory instruction beginning game program with pygame zero dash master and underneath there are all the chapters from the book so we're going to change to that um, you don't have to type it in full um, cd begin would be enough and then hit the tab key and that will complete because it knows that that's the only directory and then we want to change to chapter 11 i'm just going to resize this so that um, it's not going to wrap around the next line cd and then chapter begins with capital c it is case sensitive and you need to include that slash but if you if you use the tab key it will automatically do that for you chapter 11 um, because there's a space in there you need the backsplash to uh, to counteract the space alternatively you could put quotes around chapter 11 now within here there's a space shooter uh, directory that we're going to need that's the game and then there's also a theme file that we're going to need just to make it easier i'm going to just copy both of those to the home directory of the pi user so to copy the directory you need to use the cp for copy minus r for recursive and space shooter to slash home slash pi and then also copy the theme file and you can use the tab key as i've just done there as well to auto complete now if you do cd and then just hit enter with no directory name it takes you back to your home directory which is quite a useful shortcut so we're going to extract the contents of the theme file using tar minus and it's all lowercase x vzf and pg0-retro-theme.tgz and then copy the theme files into the emulation station themes directory which you need to do as root so we use sudo cp minus r tilde slash tilde slash is another uh, shortcut for slash home slash pi retro pi theme slash asterisk c slash emulation station themes slash carbon and now you also need to add the details to the es systems.cfg file which is in slash etc slash emulation station um, i'm going to use the vi editor vi um, if you prefer the nano editor which is the what's commonly used then you can just use that instead so sudo and then vi or nano and uh, slash etc slash emulation station es syst underscore systems dot cfg and if you go to the bottom of this file you can scroll down or just use a shortcut to get to the bottom and then just a oops, to show you it's just above this closing slash system list you need to add the new details um, and these will be provided in the description or on my website if you want to copy them from there so it starts with system name pg0 full name pi game zero the path to um, a roms directory that we're going to create in a minute 
So looking for .sh extension, I'm going to, to create shell files for each of these. And it's going to just run the name of the extension, uh, run the name of the script, and the theme is PG0, which is the one we've just copied in. So if you save that and quit, now go to that directory. That we're already well, type it full home slash pi slash retro pi slash roms and now we need to just create that directory pg0 and then amongst all those different emulators there's also one called pg0 that we're going to use now the good news is that all these steps we've just gone through you don't have to do again you only have to um, add the script file and, and the game. So this is just an initial setup. Now we want to change to that PG0 directory and we're going to have to create a new shell file that um, launches the program. So again I'm going to use Vi, use whatever editor you want shooter.sh so notice the the sh at the end to indicate this is a shell and then it's just two lines cd tilde remember i said that's a shortcut to slash home plus pi slash space shooter so it's going to change to the space shooter directory and then pgz run space shooter dot py Um, we need to give that executable permission, chmod plus x for execute, and then space shooter dot sh. Now, if you go back to the console and restart emulation station, then it should work. So. Be able to use this using the the joystick. Um, on here, we do need to restart emulation station, so just use the menu, quit, restart emulation station. And as you can see, there's a new menu. It's got the Pi Game Zero logo. And if you go into that, there's our game, Space Shooter. And then this allows you to, it's a asteroids type game. You've got a spacecraft, which you can fly around using the cursor. You fire using the um, B key, or as I've configured it, it's the left shift and you keep going until you run out lives and it's game over so you'll see that this takes up about three quarters of the screen and um, this is because this is designed for 800 by 600 and i've set the screen resolution to 1024 by 768 if you had this at hd or something like that then it would be quite small and so that's something hopefully I'll be able to cover in a future video so this you can be used to add any other Pi game or Pi game zero game you just store it into that ROMs folder so we'll, we can have a look at that using the FTP client that we used before so if you've got a a game that you want to install that's the Pi Game Zero game. Um, probably the easiest way is to put it under home slash pi. We just do a refresh here. Just as we've done here, we've got the space shooter and that's got all the executable files and, and all of the, 
the, the resource that it needs. Just go to RetroPy, ROMs, and again, just need to refresh this. And into the folder PG0, you just need to add another script file, uh, .sh, that just has the commands you need to run it. And then we can go back and there's the, the working menu system and if you add any games that are for the emulators then they will just automatically create the menus that you need. You don't have to go in and start manually configuring those files once you've done that initial setup. So I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to my channel to find out about the other maker activities I'm involved with. I've already created some videos on getting started with Pi Game Zero, such as the one shown here, and there's a couple of games on there, and I'll be adding more in future as well. So if you subscribe, you'll get to find out about those. And thanks for watching.